Eisenhower is hostess at the White House to a luncheon for the wives of the cabinet members. These are the ladies whose husbands meet to perform the tremendous task of setting our national policies. But this meeting, barred to the menfolk, is strictly Mamie's idea for a social get-together. The president's wife entertains the wives of the president's closest advisors. Dr. James Conan, new United States Commissioner for West Germany, arrives at Frankfurt en route to take up his post at Bonn. The 59-year-old Conan, retiring as president of Harvard, is met at the airport by high German government representatives and given a simple, warm greeting. He later pledges his support of peace with freedom for all of Germany. At the National Security Corps Air Training School in Hamamatsu, veteran Japanese flyers from World War II, under the supervision of American personnel, are taking to the air once again. This is the first time since the defeat of Japan that Japanese flyers pilot their own planes in accordance with U.S. policy to make Japan able to defend herself. At present, the training school has only 30 small Cessna aircraft, but will soon receive 124 heavier and speedier planes. Japan moves ahead in the mobilization of her defensive power as wings are returned to her flyers. Dim corners of Davy Jones' locker are open to exploration, fishing and exciting underwater photography by a remarkable new device, the aqua lung. In the shadow of a weather-beaten old sailing ship on one of the Hawaiian islands, a trio of underwater enthusiasts sets out to test the mechanical marvel. Plunging into the warm, deep waters off the Oahu coast, a cameraman is ready to record the underseas world. The aqualung will feed him air without air hoses or any other contact with the surface. A huge eel, a vicious killer, is spotted and speared by one of the divers, a thrill caught by the camera. The featherweight lung permits man to reach incredible depths and remain underwater for several hours. Up from the bottom, the expedition's prize catch. excitement in the bull ring at Lisbon's Campo Pequeno. Mark and Pam watch from a comfortable distance, Pam wearing an outfit designed by Sophie of Saxe. Her suit has a checked jacket and slim black skirt. In Lisbon's old city, a fishwife displays her wares to Pam and Mark. Pam wears a rose-colored wool dress, tucked bodice, and round collar. At fashionable Estoril, the favorite resort of Europe's royalty, Pamela wears a full-skirted silk afternoon dress with boldly striped bodice. Mark thinks she looks like a queen, and what could be more fitting in this regal setting? On the terrace restaurant of the Casa de Laura, overlooking the Bay of Cascaish, Pam's white cocktail dress contrasts with this little black sheep. The taffeta has velvet coin dots and a draped bodice. This is the famous Pena Palace at Sintra, a landmark that has provided a romantic background for centuries. And like many others before them, Pam and Mark are spellbound. Pam's domino evening dress of re-embroidered lace is another Sophie creation. Mark and Pam in the latest fashions see ancient Portugal. At New York's Madison Square Garden, dogs and dog fanciers from all over the country meet to decide the best of dogdom in the 77th annual Westminster Kennel Club show. Schnauzers, miniature size, and poodles, and 2,500 others have competed. Climax of the show comes when the six leading contestants for best in show title are paraded before a cheering crowd of 10,000. The decision narrows down to Doberman, Rancho Doby Storm, and Irish setter, Fender and Brain Tristan. Both dogs are almost most evenly matched. Judge James Farrell Jr. of Darien makes a final examination and points out the winner. It's Rancho Doby Storm, who for the second year in a row wins the canine world's most coveted indoor prize, best in show of the Westminster Kennel Club. Here's one dog who really talks. Listen to Nicky, pet of Mrs. C.A. Brown of Maitland, Australia. He says, hello, Mum. <laughs> Come and talk to me. Come along. Quickly. 
Now, Nicky, the best of several breeds, has never been to school, but he speaks the same language Shakespeare used. He can say, Australian accent and all, here I am. Here I am. Nicky, no glory seeker, has already turned down offers worth millions. In Paris, Ray Famichon of France and Percy Bassett of Philadelphia in white trunks battle it out for the World Featherweight title. They're fighting for an interim crown since the actual title holder, Sandy Sadler, is in the army and his title has been frozen. The rugged Bassett opens up against the Frenchman who goes back against the ropes. Sandy Sadler, on leave from duty in Germany, sees Bassett keep hurling punches against the European champion. Here's the third round. Now the knockout blow. Going down, Bassett takes the featherweight interim crown. 